Hello. Hi, hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. You know, as I, I ask it every night, how's everyone doing? And they always say, how are you doing? And it's, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Got to make the most of it, yeah. Yeah, this is it, you know. I think, um, like, having a routine, doing things like this, like, still trying to do as much work as I can, that's yeah. helping. What about yourself? Are you getting to, what's your day like? Are you training? Yeah, it's good. It's been good. I still do, I've got, uh, got some good training, still doing training, running, training in the garden. And uh, yeah, so it's good. Training's going good. Well, you start for Ramadan now, we're fasting, so we're swapping the Oh, hour. okay, right. So that's, it's my sixth day, kind of hungry now. I've got another hour. <laughs> I, I don't know too much about it. How long does it last for Ramadan? It's 30 days, but we can, last time I ate, we're like four o'clock in the morning. Okay. Eat then, and they can't eat till like half, by half eight tonight. No water, no food. Okay, and like, what's what's food like when you can eat? Well, <laughs> is it you just like getting everything into you, or is it like really healthy? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's I'm trying to be disciplined to be honest, but it does yeah. get quite times. Um, but it's not too when you in, you can only eat a little bit. Your stomach shrinks, I think, and then by the time you do eat something, you you be full straight away after a few waters and some dates and stuff. But it's good. It's good for mental discipline, anyway. Yeah, definitely mental discipline. That's a huge factor in it. Have you ever fought during Ramadan? No, no, no. I've, I've yeah. tried saying that I try doing a session before I open it, one hour before, and then I might do some at midnight before I close the fast. But no, I never fight, and I never want fight in it. No. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. So uh, you're you're set up at home. Do you have like a boxing bag set up? Do you like, or are you just kind of trying to do body weight kind of stuff? Yeah, just a lot of body work stuff, running, body work. I've got my well, gym, my train as well, so I couldn't always go there. So I'm, I'm, I'm the only one in there, so I can always use the bags and the ring for shadow boxing and whatnot. So, I was... Yeah. Go on. No, yes, that's about it. It is good. Got all the quick what I need. I was watching um, some, like, past interviews and documentaries and stuff on you earlier, just to rub up on my Cash Alley knowledge. Um, but I was really intrigued because in a lot of the media work that I saw you do, and you use the phrase "box and saved your life" quite a bit. So yeah. I was very interested to um, hear your your opinion on that, or, or hear why you're so open in, in saying that. I think it's, it's in different aspects. It can save people so many ways. Just obviously, for, first of all, I say for health. That's number one. Health. It'll keep. It's always keep yourself. You know, I feel, I feel like we've got a body. Everyone's got a gift. This is our gift, our body. Mm -hmm. And if we don't look after it, you know, it's not. I, I feel like God's given everyone a gift for their body, so we all should look after it. That's number one. And number two, and it's always, I think with a lot of boxers, a lot of them, when they start off, they mess about the hyperactive kids, get in trouble with the police in school. And it kind of, boxing sets a path where they stop doing all the wrong stuff and it, it gives them something to focus on. Mm -hmm. So it's that, that, that kind of stuff, yeah. I know that your dad played a, a very big part in your in not only your life but your your boxing yeah. life as well. Was it him who um, you know brought you to the the gym the first time or done pads? You like when it started for you? What was it or who was it that got you into it? Yeah, definitely. My dad was always into training fight. He had some martial art fights. He used to box at Brendan Ingle's gym as well. Mm -hmm. So that the boxing was always in the house with my dad. He, he was always into it. The boxing and obviously I liked MMA as well. But, um, it was so, yeah, I've always been into training, going to the gyms, and then he took me to a local gym, and that's it. It was that, it was definitely that's that was definitely gonna do that. There was no nothing else. <laughs> no were you were you always tall growing up, or was that something that came later? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was from like as far as I can remember. It was, it was from, <laughs> but, you know, my dad was really passionate about it. And he, you know, he was, he was with me all the way through my mm -hmm. fight, so he played a big role definitely. Um, would it have been your dad who saw potential in you or was that something that you saw in yourself where you said, do you know what, I'm really good at this and I could maybe take this all the way? I think a bit of both. My dad, obviously, I've always been a strong big boy. I've always been this size since I was, as far as I can remember, really. I've always been a big, big lad. So but I've always had a good power. You know, I've, I've, I've always known I'd throw a punch. So I think it was something I need to just channel my energy and channel the potential what I've got into, into boxing. And talk to me about like the when you started fighting your amateur career, you know. Yeah, yeah. It it can make or break people, you know. I know so many people who could have gone on to have amazing careers, and the kind of amateur scene sort of broke them down. Um, what was that experience like for you? 
Yes, with me, see, I'm still, I'm still learning. I only had like one amateur as a young. That's all I had. Oh, before. okay, right. Never had no like, big amateur experience or nothing. Obviously, like I, I, I sparred a lot. I went around sparring. I trained, I trained at a few gyms. Sparred with some good kids. But then, like, so once I was at Brendan's, that's where I turned professional. I turned, I went back. I started when I was 14, 15, and then I was, I didn't box for a bit, and then I went back when I was 19. I turned professional when I was 19 years old, so. I thought I was going to have some amateurs that are down at Brendan's and then I turned probably Brendan and Dominic and John and all them. In hindsight, would you like to go back? If someone said you can, you can be in the same place now, but you can go back and change some things about your career, would you have liked to have a, a more decorated amateur career? Yeah, I think, I think so because it definitely helps. But something like I said, these fires were proven. I've, I've had amateurs, but they don't make it. But also, yeah. the ones who haven't had amateurs and made it. So just the way life is, I guess. You can, you can always add bits and put things in, but... You have to just deal with what we've got and make the most of it, really. 100%. Can we talk about um, getting to train under Brendan Ingle? Yeah. I would safely say 99.9% .9 of all Irish boxing fans are Brendan Ingle fans. We're, <laughs> we, ha we hold him very close to our hearts. And I've always been so um, enamoured by, you know, the stories of fighters who trained under him and his story himself. He just seemed like such an incredible character, not just in the gym, but outside of the gym as well. Yeah, Brendan was, a, he was, he was, he was only one of the very few people that inspired me, really inspired me, you know, and, and he, he had a special, I believe he had a special relationship with everyone, anyone who met him had a special relationship with him, he had that, he had that sort of aura and that kind of goodness about him, it make you feel mm -hmm. good, just, just amazing, amazing. We had some good times, had some good times with Brendan. I mean, you say that it was like he had a special relationship with everyone and it was the energy that kind of surrounded him. But, you know, everyone is so fascinated with how he managed to do it. You know what I mean? And how he managed to have such a special relationship with so many different fighters and to be able to understand them so well, not just as a coach, but as, you know, a coach outside of the gym as well. Yeah, like I said, it was more than just the left, right on pads. It was more, it was more than that, you know. If you had any issues, if you had any problems, you could speak to him. He'll give you the best advice. And like I said, he used to keep us disciplined. Cleaning the, he used to go, sometimes he'll send us out to clean the streets. And you don't see many people doing that. And he, you'll think, you'll think how's, a, how's a son of Brendan at that age making all these young, hot-headed kids going around? <laughs> <something>? <laughs> Do you think that's kind of like a lost art in boxing? You know, oh. as, as kind of like the newer generation come in? Yeah, someone like Brendan will it'll always be missed and... But people like Brenda, they don't come around often, very often. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the problem. Absolutely. <laughs> but, that's why they're so special, right? But, yeah, but I also believe the work, what they've done, it'll, 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 last, a, it'll last a lifetime. It'll last, it'll, it'll last a lifetime, what they've done. What was the biggest lesson that you learned in your time with them? Oh, I think just become a better individual. Just mm -hmm. a better individual, respect people. Obviously, you get this. You get told. I got told these things from my dad as well. But it was mm -hmm. similar. I had that same kind of relationship with my dad and Brendan. The same kind of advice and the same kind of knowledge they t take. You know, I, I got from them. But just the Brendan, it's everything in life. Don't it? The discipline, how to treat others, how he just made you feel. To be honest, and obviously you can see the work he done with all other fighters and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, What's been your career highlight to date? Or what are some of your favourite memories of your career? Um, I said when, when I won the centre title, my mm -hmm. dad, my dad always, he always watched me spar and stuff, but the first time he actually got his uh, licence, he did my corner. Mm. That was my first title I picked up for the centre. I, I did it in Birmingham, I think, uh, NEC Arena. So I won that title. It's, that was special. That was a special... Uh, Special moment for me. Can you remember the conversation that he had with you after winning that? Did you say anything of great magnitude? <laughs> I, I don't think he needed to. I think he, he held the belt like it was his. Well, it was his. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. I watched um, a documentary. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but they had the, the footage in that is your dad backstage with the belt on. It's, it's a very lovely moment. That, was, uh, that belt was glued to him for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I think I left it in his bedroom as well, actually. <laughs> that was definitely one of my... Uh, I, I, another one, I like when I boxed at Yoko. I boxed mm. at, that was a... Yoko's a very small place, but the atmosphere there was like, wow. 
And actually, my last fight, well, not the last one, the big one I had with David Price as well. That was a good mm-hmm. one. Apart from the result, but it was, good, it was <laughs> nice. It was a nice uh, experience, I'd say. Well, like, I mean, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the rather large elephant, you know? Like, when you look back on that time, one thing that I always struck me about it is that, you know, afterwards I had a, a massive amount of compassion for you because it just seemed like just such a, a a terrible situation to be in for like a whole host of different reasons not just because of obviously losing the fight but there was such it was everywhere it was in in every boxing media outlet that you could name they were speaking about it like, what yeah. was that time like you know I, obviously it was a mistake we know that but at yes. that time i had to be uh, you had to be thick skinned you've seen people with less People, it causes people mental, you know, it can cause people to go off rails. It was, it was, a, I was getting abused for a long time, but uh, I'm actually with thick skin, you know. I, even then, when you saw back at Brendan, go back to Brendan, he used to say, If you can laugh at yourself, he goes, You'll, you'll succeed, you know. Not many things mm-hmm. are bothering you, laugh at yourself, but um, I had to be thick skin. Obviously, there was some, there were a lot of things I didn't, I did not like. I understood why people were still angry and that kind of stuff, but some people going out of context and just going over the top. But like I said, it went, it went well. But I was getting phone calls from uh, America, India, Pakistan saying, "Yes, you're on the papers in TV in our local <laughs> in our local TV. What have you done?" <laughs> but, well, uh, I mean, when you, when you Google your name, it's just article and article of, of just all about the the price fight, you know. Um, how does that make you feel? You know, knowing that that situation will always probably follow you. You know, no matter what you do in your career, you'll always be known as the guy. Who bit David Price? Yeah, it will be. It'll be sport. I'll, I believe at the same time. I'll let, now I've got the chair. I've got my license back. I've had a two fights. Mm-hmm. I've, got, I've got myself a good solid team around me. I'm training with Richard Towers and got Dennis Hobson and Steve. So I think now is a good time for me to show show my first of all show my skills. Show what I'm really about. Obviously, I can win fights without biting people. Yes. <laughs> and uh, just talking that. The, See what it is, people that don't know me, after they've seen that bite, the first thing in the thing, what a vile man, animal, mm-hmm. not a nice person. Like I said, I, I'm not here to prove people, because people that know me, they know that's not me, and you can't, you can't go off one mistake of a person to judge them. Absolutely. You know? Well, there's a very good saying, if you point your finger at someone, remember there's three pointing back at yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I always like to go by. But is it hard, you know, like... To be a professional fighter at the level that you're at, knowing that, you know, at things like press conferences, at fights, you know, there's always going to be media, they're always going to be watching, they want the clickbait, they want the, the lines, they want the story to, you know, sell their papers or sell their, their websites or whatever it is. Is it hard to kind of live your life and make mistakes if you do make them in front of the, the media and, and in public? Yeah, yeah definitely. Because like, even when I was reading the papers, it, it, it was like, I bit him five times, six times. Like, no, I bit him. I bit him twice. That's that's the that's the truth. If anyone wants to know how many times, it was twice. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's, it's always the papers to do. That's their job to make it to make mm-hmm. it bigger than what it actually is. Even though it was a big thing, it wasn't it wasn't a small thing. What I did, you know, and I, and I held my hands up for it, and, I, and it won't happen again. But it was something like the stuff I was reading. I'm thinking it could, that just makes that makes the normal public hate you even more for what you've actually done. Mm-hmm. First of what it is, so I hope they do. You know, the stuff like this, they need to stop over exaggerating things. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have. There's no excuse to buy someone, but there's always things that trigger you off, and that's life. And unfortunately, I made a mistake on live Sky Sports with thousands of watching. But <laughs> you couldn't have, couldn't have done it at a better opportunity. <laughs> if it was someone else, it wouldn't have been that bad, would it? But, but but do you know, up. like, well, and at least there's always the comparison to Tyson, which is never a bad thing, right? Well, I got other comparisons. Was the footballer, the Soros footballer? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was in Liverpool as well. <laughs> but you know, it's like it's just it's when the, like, I suppose like working in combat sports media, I I'm around you know fighters most of the time. Fight week, cutting weight, you know, tensions are high, emotions are high. You know, yeah. it's 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 not your average work scenario. It's not yeah. your average like I. It, I think it's very hard for the casual fan or the people who watch boxing from home, from the comfort of their own couch, to understand 
what it's like to be filled with adrenaline, to be yeah. what it's like to be punched in the face, you know. So I, it's, it's those kind of things that you want to try and help people to understand and get that point across. Yeah, definitely, because it, sitting on a couch, you, you, you can't understand anything sitting on a couch, but especially boxing. Yeah. But, you know, physically be around, or, well, at least being punched in the face, or like I said, being around, seeing fighters, see, see the how after fights, before fights, in training camps, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult, that's why Brendan used to say, he goes, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Mm. I was going to do the Irish accent then, but I didn't. Yeah. Please try it, go on, give one little try of an Irish accent. I don't know what it is. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's terrible. That was a one out of ten at best. I'm quite bad at it. <laughs> We're going to give you two for effort, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, looking, looking forward to kind of positive things, like, do you feel like now you have even more of a point to prove? No, definitely. This is, a, for me, I, I always want to do it for people in my family and mm -hmm. my trainer and everybody. But where were we? We were talking before, before we got cut off, we were talking about, um, obviously, putting everything that had happened with the price fight and the negative media and all that kind of stuff. And then moving forward to now, obviously, this year is sort of like a spanner is in the works with everything that's going on. But, you know, what I was asking is, is there now more of a fire underneath you to prove to everyone how good of a fighter that you can be? Yes, definitely. You know, I, I believe that fight, I, I took it a bit of a show notice. Mm -hmm. People want, it's that I don't, that, that did not show my foot, that didn't, that didn't show my full skills, you know. People that know me, they know what I'm capable of. And that's what I mean now, once this is over, this year, next year, you'll, you'll see, you'll see what I'm really about. And I, and I do believe I belong, I belong at that top level. And I'm, 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 I'm going to show people. In terms of goals, you know, do you have, do you have a, a clear set goal in place? Or is it just to get back to be active and to get back into winning ways? No, definitely. I want to pick up a British title and then take it from there. To go on. I, I want to go to the top. You know, I, I've sparred all the top heavyweights, all the world champions. I've sparred them all. And I, 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 if they can do it, there's no reason why I can't do it. You know, and I, I, I believe in myself. Obviously, you're saying that you've, you've, you've sparred some of the great fighters that are out there, great heavyweights. What is it, in your opinion, that separates a great heavyweight from an average heavyweight? See, I think every top heavyweight is got to have some sort of. Not not everyone's going to be hundred percent on everything, but mm -hmm. they've got to have something hundred percent about you. Whether it's your speed, your power. Well, I say that, but all heavyweights can punch. Mm -hmm. But I think what separates them is, I think more than anything, discipline. Discipline. If you're disciplined, that means you're going to be in shape, and if you're in shape, you're going to be fit. Not all heavyweights are fit. Not all heavyweights are fast. But I think speed, movement, I think one well, thing for being a heavyweight, if you've got speed, agility, look at Tyson Fury, he's proved it. He's got good movement, good agility, good, he's got good movement for his size. And look, he's not the biggest puncher. He is a big puncher, but he's not the, he's not the biggest puncher. Look, he's, and look what damage he's done mm -hmm. to the heavyweight. And he's proven it. Look, he's a big man, but he knows how to utilise his size to his full advantages. When you were growing up, who was the, the, the people that inspired you? What fighters did you look up to? Yeah, uh, Mike Tyson had to be Mike Tyson. <laughs> he, he's actually the first person I You took that inspiration a little too literal, little... don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. Yeah, it was a little too far, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Mike Tyson is a classic. It's, I think a lot of people, many, many boxers were, were you know. Um, can you remember the first time that you watched him? Like, what was it? I'm always very interested to, to, to hear about, you know, what sparked something in someone to go yeah, on then and to kind of try and repeat that themselves. I think with Tyson, obviously I was, I was I'm, I'm only 28, so when he was, when Tyson was in his prime, I, must, I wasn't even born in, mm. I wasn't even born, 89, his best end was like 89, 90s, wasn't it? Yeah. But like, I remember him, I think when he fought Frank Bruno in 96, when he come out of jail, the second he comes, I seen it in the papers, I was like, wow. Mm. I think even the Holyfield fight, I actually seen <laughs> What? What did you say there? The Evander Holyfield fight. <laughs> I feel best keep my mouth shut. But then, them, I do remember him though with his black shows. Just I remember when I was young, I used to go. I used to, my dad used to take me to the local barbers. I'd be like, I want that Mike Tyson echo, you know, with the, <laughs> with the little, the little, the slit. Yeah, yeah. With the slit. Yeah. A classic. I still get, I still get my hair's going. So <laughs> do you believe in uh, life purpose? Do you believe you were you were put here to be a fighter? 
No, definitely. I, I believe everyone's got a gift. Mm. You, you just gotta find. Sometimes might. T- sometimes you've got to go through different stuff, different experiences, different work stuff to realize what you actually are. But for me, hundred percent, this I'm here. I'm here to do, do this. And for me, what I probably go into this with but other boxers. I, what I've noticed is even though champions when they retire or they achieve a certain goal, I feel like a lot of boxers get stuck after that. Mm. Me, boxing is my life, but. I believe it's a tool to do something bigger and better after boxing. Yes. And you can use, you can use it for something. Where it, I think fighters go wrong where it is your, uh, for that moment in time you're in boxing, it is your life and soul. You have to put everything into it. But once it's over, you've got to find that balance. I agree. I, I definitely agree. So with, you, with that in mind, do you think about after boxing? And do you think about what you'd like to do? Yeah, definitely. I, I, my goal, I want to help people. I, I believe... We, we all, we're not here for long. Tops 80 years, 70 years, whatever it is. You, you want to make the most of and help. I want to help people in any sort of way, whether it's physically, mentally, any sort of way, make them better, make them a better person, help them in training, help the help the poor people. You know that that's that's my that's my goal. I want to make the world. But you, okay, you can't make the whole world a better place, but you can make certain parts of it mm. better. If everyone does their part, we'll, we'll be in a good world. Why is it important to you to be like that or to achieve that? If we're, you know, I'm a, I'm a God-believing man and mm. it's, that's one thing. And number two, the way my dad's brought us up, you know, we, like, I said, like I said, the way he's brought us up and what, how he's taught us what's right and wrong. And it's, it's always the case, if you can always help anyone, that's the first, I believe that's, that, that's what's going to help. That's what, that, that's, it's these things that help you in life. Absolutely. Help, Helping others, and it'll come. And like I said, I, I don't do it. I don't help someone to make sure the favors come back on me. No, I never like that. They say if you do something good, forget about it. Don't ever. Mm. But if you do something good for you, never, never forget it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's another old, very good phrase where it says, I think it's a Maya Angelou quote, but it's, um, "People won't remember what you did; they'll remember how you made them feel." Yeah, That's which true, is yeah. a very telling uh, yeah. quote, I think. That's definitely, most definitely. It's how you feel within yourself, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. How do you think, or what advice would you give to, like, young males that are finding themselves sort of, like, lost? Or that, because you're in a very good position to be able to give advice to people for when they've made mistakes. Because obviously we spoke about it, you've made a very public uh, mistake in the past. But you managed to, you know climb your way out of that and now you're like you know you're talking about like wanting to achieve and sticking to to boxing and different things so how do we like help young males that are in our society that don't have have, that haven't found their purpose and don't know what it is that they want to do and are essentially lost i think first of all you have to help yourself like you you can't just sit there and think miracles are gonna happen Mm -hmm. I think you have to just get get out, try a few things, whatever it is. It doesn't necessarily mean boxing or sports, just but just try a few things, just whatever. But main thing is connect with yourself, mm-hmm. find what's right for you, and then just just give it. Once you find that, then just give it your all, whatever it is. You know, really, if you don't really fail, do you? if you if you do something, and if you think you're not doing well at it, remember all the stuff, all the time you've been doing it. It's experience. You've learned it. You've you've gained the experience. Well, while helping your next work of life or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So get yourself, connect yourself, main thing, connect yourself with good people. If you're in a situation where you feel like your friends are bad or you're doing bad stuff, then get out of that circle. Get with people who are positive, who are going to expand your brain, make you feel better. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. It's good company as well. Get yourself in good company. And then the once you're in good company, then you can get to know yourself a bit better. You feel positive, you get positive energy around you. I agree. 100%. So while we were talking, everyone that's watching has an opportunity to, to ask questions. So I'm just going to go into the question box, see what everyone's been asking, and uh, we'll see what questions are there. Um, <laughs> uh, Jay McFarlane, heavyweight boxer, <laughs> jokingly said, tell the big man I'll teach him how to bite and not get caught. There's an art to it. <laughs> Oh, you have to laugh at these things, right? Um, yeah. 
uh, Damien has asked, do you think, would you want, and do you think you would ever get the price rematch? I'll, personally, I would love to have it. I'll, I'll take that tomorrow, because I know if you watch the fight, you, you know, I thought the tables were changing a bit. And uh, he, David Price knows that. He knows, I think he was happy that I beat him. I, I, even though people say I, people say I found a way out of the fight, but I think he was actually happy that happened. But yeah, if he if he wanted him, I'll definitely take it. Whether he whether he wants to, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Well, we'll maybe someone will send him a message and ask him. <laughs> um, Karen has asked a question. She's asked uh, if you could quarantine with five people, dead or alive, who are you picking? I think uh, the five people. You have to remember now, you're all going to be in a house together. So they have to get on. <laughs> yes. I, think, I, I definitely have Mum Dali, yeah? Oh, yeah. Without yeah, doubt. I, I like to have Denzel Washington. Yeah, Who, somebody else said Denzel. Dave Allen said Denzel Washington as well. <laughs> um, who else? Who else? Let me think. I think there will be probably more few more few more other boxers just get the pick up pick up their brains that kind of stuff. Yeah. Maybe maybe a George Foreman. <laughs> oh yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, who else can I be? That's three there. Um, who else? I think I, I think at least one I think at least one good for the ears as well. Maybe maybe someone like I don't know Mariah Carey or something. Yeah. <laughs> Mariah Carey is the last person I imagined she would say. Oh, well, she, she's she got well, uh, Maybe the singer. Maybe some, maybe some other good singer. Maybe Drake or something. Yeah, we'll throw Drake in there. Um, let's check. Uh, Clinton Scott has asked, um, in your spare time, what do you do? Reading, any books, TV, question mark. Yeah, believe I don't. I don't actually watch TV. I don't yes, TV. well done. I don't have a TV. Yeah. <laughs> people find it strange when you say that. Don't yeah, they? people are like, they're like, you don't have a TV. Like, what? Like, there is a TV in my house, but I just don't have. There's no like connection or whatever. So it's just I really need to get rid of it. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's that. So I don't watch TV. I've not watched for years. But we have got our phones, and we can watch stuff on that. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I don't even watch movies. To be honest, I watch. I try studying boxing, some old fights, new fights. I catch up with the, I keep, I keep updated with the boxing. And uh, that's about it, really. So with that, there's a question that was in there, right? It's a good question. Um, Amy has asked, if I'm on YouTube, and it says, if I'm on YouTube and I'm searching for a classic fight, what do you recommend? It's a good question. Classic. <laughs> there's quite a few good classic fights. I think one of the I think a lot of people would say the first Riddick Bo Abanda Holyfield fight if you've not seen that. Yeah. But any any of them three any any three for them that was a that was a good one. Um what else is it? Let me think. Obviously you can get the famous Ali Fraser fight, that was a good one. Yeah, so them kind of fights them two definitely. I definitely recommend the Holyfield uh, bow fight. Yeah, it's a good one. What was I watching? Well, I, I, I'm a very big Ricky Hatton fan and I've done the back catalogue of um, Arturo Gatti as well. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. And then I got into like documentaries about his life and his death and I was down a rabbit hole in it. Um, yeah. Tom Little would like to know, what's your plan? <laughs> Hi, Tom Little. <laughs> um. But listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Uh, no, thank, thank you for coming me. on. It was a great chat. Good to talk to you. Yeah, you as well. Appreciate appreciate getting me on, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Yeah, no doubt. As soon as we're back, schedules are just. I don't care what fight is announced. I just want a fight to be announced. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll catch up soon. And thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. See Thanks, Cash.